welcome to the Internationalist Podcast. Um, I think this is something that Mills and I have been quite excited for for a minute. Just an opportunity for us to sit down and have a chat to both you guys and each other, whether we're sitting in the same room or halfway across the planet on completely solo missions. Just have a bit of a chat about some various things when we're in Europe, when we're still in Melbourne, when we're here, just going through some some weekly things, some travel tips, some things that we've seen in the past or just recently that we thought would be interesting and just sit down and have a little bit of a chat and see where we go, really. Um, so to start us off, I thought we'd just sort of introduce ourselves to you guys. Obviously, we know who each other are. Um, introduce ourselves to you guys so you can sort of know where we've been and what we're about, um, some future missions, some of our favourite travel bits and, and all that sort of stuff. And Lindsay, take it away, mate. Alrighty, so I'm Luca, also known as Millsy, as you'll hear and get to know. Um, and I guess my background is I did a, I lived in Berlin, had a stint and studied there, uh, been through a bit of North Africa, a lot of West Africa, done Europe, done a lot of Southeast Asia, um, and a few of the Pacific Islands. Uh, so pretty well covered. Um, but really into kind of the history side of things and the cultural understanding of the places that I go to and uh, mainly prioritising getting to know the local people, not really into tours. One of my big passionate hates is tour guides, as you'll come to learn. Absolutely. I think it's one of the best ways to immerse yourself in the culture is just by throwing yourself in that deep end and finding the rogue spots where, you know, Right now, we're filming this, we're in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, and literally a block away, we haven't seen, you know, within a couple of blocks, we've seen, we've seen any other white people. Um, Which has been a nice change. Yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit interesting, um, because some of the locals don't speak any English, or if they do, it's very little, and we don't speak any Vietnamese. So it's been a little bit, a little bit interesting today strolling around and having a speak to some people, but it's it's such a nice change and I think seeing seeing the not marked up areas, for example, yeah. it's really it's a really interesting cultural experience for the both of us. Um, so I'm Ethan. Uh, a bit of background on me. I moved to the UK um, a couple of years ago to pursue some football. Um, but while I was there, I did a little bit of traveling, mostly through Europe and mostly places that I had been before with my parents when I was a little bit younger. I've done quite a lot of Europe. I've done a fair bit of Asia, uh, New Zealand, um, all of the UK. Not quite as well covered as Millsy, but certainly making my way through. It's certainly something that I'm very passionate about and I have been enjoying and have been enjoying the prospect of doing um, with some of the plans that we've got coming up over the next couple of months and couple of years, really, we've got a um, very interesting assortment of, of stuff that's going to go on over to the uh, internationalist channel, both domestically and internationally. It's quite an exciting period of time for us. Well, we've got a really ex- exciting schedule, and I think that's one of the excellent things that this podcast will give is we can be more upfront and honest. Mm with you guys because the main channel is very clean cut content and it doesn't it won't really give you a fit for I guess our previous experiences mm. and what we actually are truly thinking because we have to present it in a way which is appropriate for that channel. hundred percent and knowledgeable and you know clean cut we're going for a lot of short form um, videos at the moment. Yeah. And when we when we are doing that, one of the, one of the videos that we filmed today in Ho Chi Minh, it was very it was a very interesting, yeah, a very interesting place for both of us. Neither of us had been there before. Fascinating to look at and experience a very cultural and historical part of the city. Yeah. Um, but it was very while we're there, it is tough to get across just what we're thinking because we are so focused on the on the historical and cultural yeah. side and bringing that education two people so i think it's it'll be a very nice change for you guys and for us to sit here and have a little bit of a relaxed sort of slow slow down conversation we can discuss what 100 everything really now 
moving in to this type of concept here, the first weekly topic that we will definitely be doing, and it will continue, is the pet peeve of the week whilst traveling. And this topic I personally curated because I have an extra large pet peeve this week. And Ethan and I were sitting on the plane yesterday from Melbourne to Ho Chi Minh City, and we were in row 49. So not exactly near the front of the plane. The plane lands, and the second the plane lands, how many people got up? How many people were on the plane, mate? Yeah, exactly. Minus two of us. Oh, my God. Everyone straight up. And they stand there for 15 minutes. Yeah. For what reason? That is the pet peeve. I guess following on to this is once we did actually arrive and the gate was ready, the door was opened, they only used one door. How many doors are on one of those planes? What, eight at There's, least? Yeah, there was eight. And realistically, all right. Probably get three. You pro yeah. You probably get three. Why don't they use all three? I don't understand. You only use the front one. It takes you 15 minutes to get off. Everyone stands up straight away. You don't move anywhere. It's a hassle for everyone involved. I really, I really don't understand that it did. It took us, it took us ages that is to my, disembark yesterday. Oh, that is my pet peeve of the week because we witness it every time we get on a plane. Every time. And I just don't understand why. Every time. Mine was, this is, I mean, this is a pet peeve in general of mine, but specifically when traveling, you know, you don't want to be late to where you're going. You don't want to miss your flight. There's always that, in the, like, you know you're not going to miss it, but there's always that panic of, oh, what if I miss it? They're not going to wait for me, whatever. You want to get there as early as you can. You want to be there on time. But there's always people, as you are trying to get where you're going, who are standing in the middle of the walkway, on their phones with no concept of spatial awareness and you walk into them every time and they always look at you like it's your fault. And I don't think, when we were at the airport yesterday, um, we know, I noticed it especially and it does grind my gears, man. It really does grind my gears. It's a real pain because, all right, in some parts of the world you walk on the right, in some parts of the world you walk on the left, but in no part of the world do you sit in the middle no. and just not move? No. It's just not an option. We might have fit some people with hazard lights yeah. walking through an airport. And as you, as you stop, as you stop on your suitcase, so there just should be hazard lights. On your phone. Like it, you, the flash on your just phone just starts going, but even then, move out of the way. Move to the side. Yeah. Maybe we need a warden to walk through airports and push people to but the side. Right. I like that. Maybe a, a ticket that, yeah. You walk through, and if you stand still you on your phone it. for more than 30 seconds, you get to it. You get yeah. fine. I like it. I like that as well. So, we're not only addressing... We're addressing the pet peeves, not just delivering them. No, we're finding solutions We've got for solutions. them as well. This is the sort of, these are the sort of brainstorming that you will see over on the International Podcast. Moving into some of our other topics, I just thought we'd give you guys a quick little breakdown of some of the stuff that you can expect to see over the coming weeks, months. months. Um, Probably yeah. a year, to be honest. Yeah. We've well, got a lot on the schedule. We do. We've, we've got, got a lot. Got a very, a very busy and very exciting schedule over the next few months. Um, for you guys who probably don't know, we are both based in Melbourne, Australia. So a lot of the initial content that we've come out with has been surrounding cultural and historical things just around around Melbourne um, and some of those videos will be out when this goes up but there's quite a lot that's been we've actually found quite a lot to talk about quite locally to us we did a bit of a trip up to Ballarat we've got a couple of trips up to Sydney and Adelaide and potentially one into the centre of Australia as well um, there's quite a lot of content that is coming out of Australia at the moment and for such a big country we actually are doing quite a bit of traveling up and down um, for this content which is quite exciting but at the moment we are in as I said before Vietnam specifically Ho Chi Minh this was more of a holiday yeah. concept for you and I initially we were having a look at it um, just thought we both needed a break where can we go we were looking at random flights we both have a passion for traveling where we could go internationally that was cheap and Ho Chi Minh was 
pretty much top of that list. So that's where we are at the moment. And we've got quite a lot of content coming out of here. A lot of a lot of stuff food wise, a lot of stuff culturally, landmarks, exactly. City. Mm. And the big thing is, and one of the things that we do have to say, traveling to Vietnam is awfully easy. Like the the barrier access for Vietnam is definitely one that a beginner traveler could come to quite comfortably. Like visa, we did on a portal in 15 minutes. Dead easy. If you know how to spell your name, it's done first go. Spell your name, copy some details out from your passport, you are sorted. I think that's another thing that I think will be great to to speak to the ladies and gentlemen about is travel tips. Yeah. So if you guys are struggling with getting into countries, visa applications, things like that, do let us know because the likelihood is we we deal hard hard to do it or we are currently dealing with it. So we should be able to give you guys a hand with that aspect. But no, I'm not exactly right. The process for the application to get into Vietnam, easy, dead simple. Landing, airport setup, impressive. They've got taxis, there's buses, Mm -hmm. there's, we use Grab, which is the equivalent of Uber. And it's excellent. It was on time, clean, fast, air efficient. conditioned, air conditioned, which was very important for us coming from what was it, about nineteen degrees when we left into thirty odd and eighty odd percent humidity. It was, it was a at big ten change. pm. Might we add? Yes, yes, and it hasn't really changed at all since then, except to get hotter. Yeah, it went to thirty five mm. on its way to thirty eight. Mm. But while while we are here, there is. A lot of content to come out I think especially especially in the food department I think in comparison to Melbourne or Western or Western society the food that we are used to is so vastly different to the stuff that we've been saying not just yeah. in products specifically but the way it's sold 100%. from vendors and it's walking through the streets of Ho Chi Minh it is absolutely brilliant and so interesting to see the way that they do go about selling their stuff and what they're selling. It's more lively. It's fresh ingredients. You know that nothing's been frozen because you walk past of a morning and you see them cutting it up. You walk past of a morning, you see the broth being boiled, Mm. the meat's being cooked. You know it's all fresh. The smells around here are heavenly. They are unbelievable. We we were all bright and early this morning to, to take a stroll through and Everywhere you turn, yeah. there's people setting their setting their stuff up. We were out at what eight thirty. Yeah, we're having a time. look. Like, oh, do we want to try some of this? Yeah, like it's superb. Really is, really is a fantastic, fantastic area. Speaking of foods, I have made a little bit of a list for us here right. in terms of um, foods that you would or wouldn't eat. Right. I think both you and I are quite adventurous with. We've had some Our foods, we have had some interesting things, as you guys will see in the video Coming that up. comes out from, um, yeah. yeah, from the Help Human Eats video. But I'm just going to work your way down the list and I just want you to tell me if you have yeah. or if you would um, or wouldn't eat it. We'll start from the top. Spider. Well, I have. We had it so in Cambodia. I. Had it in Cambodia. And i got to say, had it deep fried, just kind of tastes like oil. Had it kind of boiled, I guess, and it's very chewy. Mm. But, and the back of the spider tastes quite funny. But I'll definitely eat them again, and I definitely wouldn't turn them down. It's actually quite, it's actually quite good. I, I thought, I thought the same. I only had them fried yeah. when I when I had them. I didn't think they were that bad. I didn't think there was a particular, you know, a massive amount of flavour to them. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was definitely a story. You don't know, um, back. Sorry? You wouldn't rush back. No, probably not, but it is something that I think you have to try, especially when you're in the area. It's a delicacy here. They eat all sorts of things that we would, as Westerners, consider abnormal, I suppose. But I I quite like the spider. Uh, How about a scorpion? Gene scorpion. Again, did in uh, Mm -hmm. northern Cambodia. Definitely a more interesting feed. Um, It was very crunchy and... I think I kind of ate it wrong because the exoskeleton on them was a bit, it was really chewy. I didn't really get through it properly. Mm -hmm. Made it a little bit less enjoyable. Um, So I'm not sure if I'll return to that. I haven't tried scorpion yet. 
Um, it's definitely something that I'd be interested to try. Yeah. I, th- I think if it's not going to kill you, why not? Hey? You are, yeah. So I don't see why I wouldn't try it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to find any around here. Well, you have a crack. But we definitely will. And if, if we do, you guys will definitely see it in one of the videos. So yeah. if I do, well, stay tuned to see how that one goes. Yeah. Um, how about a cricket? Yeah, had crickets before. Yeah. And they just taste like nothing. I do I do tend to agree. There's a lot of crisp to them. Yeah. Um, you get a bit of wing stuck in your teeth. Yeah, but it's... But, Protein snack. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, one of the many reasons that they do get eaten, especially in this part of the world, was, you know, when Nutrition. when Pol Pot was knocking about, food was a little bit scarce. They had to they had to go for those high protein sort of snacks, and they found that they are actually they're not they're not half bad. Right, um, definitely something I'd be I'd be willing to go for again. I don't yeah. I don't see any issue with them whatsoever. Um, this might strike a little bit of a nerve for some people at home. Uh, have you and would you eat dog? No. Obviously, quite simply, I think there's a certain line of things that I wouldn't eat mm-hmm. and that, in general, is endangered. Anything more than endangered yeah. because you're contributing to their absolutely, extinction. Absolutely, absolutely. But two... Dog's man's best friend. It, it, it really is. It's not dinner. No, I agree. I do I do tend to agree. I think there's a wide variety of ulterior options yeah. out there. Um, and if you do have those options, I don't really understand why you'd go and eat dog again in this part of the world where food was a little yeah. bit scarce at the point. You run out of options a little bit. I do get it. Um, would I try it here? Not unless it was particularly well disguised, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know I was eating it, unless you got jump scared, I imagine, jump I imagine it would be okay. But I don't think I could willingly eat yeah. a dog. No. Um, how about a field mouse? Field mouse definitely would. Mm-hmm. I haven't had it. I've had rat on the other end of the spectrum. Yep. Um, how was that? Tasted perfectly fine. Yeah. Kind of tasted ironically. It was like the texture of chicken, but almost had a bit more flavour, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got to say, I think there's a bit of a misconception. Something like field mouse, rat, that hasn't lived in a city is perfectly fine to eat. Yeah. Because like a field mouse here from fields has eaten the food that is going to get processed for humans to eat anyway. I suppose it's, it's sort of like um, when you look at fish. Yeah. When you eat the fish that live and feed on the bottom, there is a bit of a moody sort of flavour to yeah. the flesh. So it does sort of seep through. So I can imagine it. It'll be the same with anything, you know, when you compare grass fed to grain fed beef. Well, exactly. It's a, it's a difference in, in what they eat. So I can't imagine that in terms of in terms of mouse, it would be exactly the same sort yeah. of thing. I haven't tried mouse before, but I'm definitely sort of open to it. Yeah. I don't. I can't imagine there's a lot of meat on them. No, but I'd, yeah. I'd definitely be willing to give what there is a good go. Yeah. Um, Kangaroo, obviously, both being from Australia. Yeah, it's a bit of a different one for mm. people that aren't from Australia. Yes, but I'd say it's a little bit rough, but for us, I mean, they are everywhere. And it's actually quite nice. It is quite nice. Like, the, the no, cooking no, on a barbecue. Yeah. It's it's a very lean meat. There's not a lot of fat on it at all, but the flavour's yeah. quite nice, especially um, give it a bit of a marination for a bit. Yeah. It's quite nice. It's quite a nice piece of meat. I don't see anything, anything wrong with that. And actually... Mm. It's a very good substitute for beef because it does lack the the fat quantity. It's not. Nice. Um, no, I definitely I have before, and I definitely would again. Yeah. Uh, how about ox? All right. So the thing with ox is Ethan and I are not chefs. And no. When we had ox, I'll cop the blame on this one. I was cooking. I butchered it. It tasted chewy. Burnt. Burnt. Yeah. Not pleasant. And I would happily eat it again if a professional chef cooked it. I I think I would tend to agree. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I'm going to steer away from that for the time being. Because um, I think I could have chewed that for about three days and it wouldn't have. Yeah. Nothing would have happened to it. Um, it no offense to your cooking on that no, one. It wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. Um, how about snail? 
well, obviously the delicacy in France. We've seen a lot of it here. Yeah. Um, had it. We've, I've had it in West Africa mm-hmm. and France. French know how to cook a snail. Yeah, I can give them that. That that, that they do. I've also tried snail in France, and I quite enjoy it. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's a, it's an interesting texture. It's quite. It's almost seafoody. It's almost squid yeah. octopus like. Hundred percent. But flavors wise, I mean, especially probably only if you cook it with garlic. Yeah. Is it particularly nice? I can't imagine it'd be that great. Plain. Yeah. But I agree. I think it's. I think it's quite. I think it's quite nice. They do eat snails in Vietnam as well, so we will yeah. definitely be jumping over and giving it a try here and seeing what it's like, seeing what the differences are, maybe. That will definitely be in a video for you guys to see as well. Um, and I guess one thing, uh, word of warning for the snail family, if you're going to try giant slug to try and be adventurous, <laughs> um, don't. It tastes like dirt, especially if it doesn't have seasoning and you're just eating it in a random village in West Africa. Yes, I can't, I can't imagine that's not the... Not the taste use of things to eat. It's up there with ox that I cook on chewiness factor. That's, and that's I was chewy. hungry. I was hungry. That's chewy. You didn't try to swallow a whole? It's very big. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Um, we'll put it there for the time being. Now, well, yeah, we're going to take a break because we can't give our sponsorship. Yes. And we need to refill our beverages. I need a zesty drink. Alrighty. So we'll come back feeling refreshed. Cup of God's nectar. That's the way, mate. That is the way. We're on holiday, eh? Um, so we just wanted to jump into one of our other sections that I think will feature weekly depending on how you guys like it and depending on how we like it, I guess, which is something we're going to call the, well, I guess, the travel, travel wall. Yeah. Um, basically, we're just going to go through rain and, and speak about places that we've both been and determine whether or not we wouldn't stop over there. We'd stay, we'd spend a day there. Yeah. We'd spend a weekend, we'd spend a week, yeah. or whether we'd get lost and wouldn't really care if we found our way out. 100%. Um, starting us off, let's go for European. Yep. Let's go Prague. Personally, one of my favorite cities that I've been to. Food's fabulous. Yep. The beer's fabulous. Yep, sure. Um, the, it's, it's phenomenal looking. It looks absolutely, it really is. It is a phenomenal thing to look at, especially when you, you're you up in the morning and you go across the bridge into the old town, the mists, the mists over the water. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's all about the picture. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I was there 18 months ago, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And I went with my father and it was, it was phenomenal. The yeah. food there, it is, well, it's got one purpose behind it, and that is line your stomach. You could kill a man with that bread. Yes. It's but it, it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah. Which is a, it's good. Yeah. Christmas, Michael, was amazing. Yeah. It was there around Christmas. Um, yeah, I, I definitely have to put this and open it up, and I'll spend a week there happily. I would absolutely spend a week there. It is, it's one of my favorite places that I've been so far. I think it is an absolutely phenomenal city. Moving a bit closer to home, yeah. in fact, moving home, uh, Melbourne. I think growing up there and spending so many years there, you and I probably have a slightly different view yeah. to everyone else, but I think it's important to everyone else to yeah. understand that we do live there, we see the good and the bad of it, so I think we are probably the most qualified people to yeah. give an accurate image of what it is actually like to live in Melbourne. We both live a little bit outside of Melbourne, we don't live in the city centre. In the suburbs. But we do we do venture in quite often yeah. um, with friends by ourselves, whether it's it's for this sort of stuff. I think the big thing is that uh, I wouldn't get lost there. I wouldn't no. be happy to get lost there. No. A, because I don't think there's that much to do as a tourist. Melbourne, oh, I think, is like a lot of Australian cities, and there's a bit of a misconception, I feel, that... Work-life balance is you go into the city, you work, you go home. There's not that much historically important stuff going on in Melbourne. No, I mean, especially when you compare it to European cities, it is quite new. Mm. 
it is quite new and there's yeah. not a whole heap of stuff that has happened there of historical significance there is a few things and the, those few things you will see videos on um whether or not they're up now whether or not they'll be up later they will definitely be up on the international channel so go have a look at them but there's not a whole heap yeah. that happens i think the nightlife is good yeah got it. it is expensive unnecessarily yeah i do i do tend to agree there is um You've got a know. lot of price markups in Melbourne. It is a very livable city. It's very family friendly, yes. especially in the suburbs. It's a not, there's a lot of nice open spaces and parks and things like right. that. Not too far from the beach either. The yeah. access is good. Now, yeah, like the big one is where you're putting it on the rankings. I'd spend a weekend there. Yeah. I'd spend a weekend there. Look, I don't dislike it. Yeah. I don't dislike it. But having lived there for 17 years, maybe longer than that, maybe 18 years, I don't think I'd spend much more than that. I think I could comfortably get everything done in Melbourne City proper in a weekend. Yeah. If you want to do Victoria, a week. But Melbourne City, a week. I would tend to agree. Fly in on a Friday, fly out on the Sunday night, and you'll be satisfied with your time in that. I do, t I do tend to agree on that one. The third and final one on our list today yes. is Venice. Controversial, I reckon. The flowing city. Yeah. Our opinion here isn't going to go down well with what a lot of people spend their primary school learning. No. About this magical no. floating city with gondolas and a man who's going to paddle you around no. the clean... Smelling good streets. Yes. Personally, I'll put it quite bluntly, I didn't like it. There, there are some beautiful parts. St. Mark's Square is a fabulous square. It is a very, it is a very picturesque place. Yeah. It looks very nice. Historically, very important. And it is, it is quite cool. It is yeah. quite cool. But it is tiny. It is yeah. so enclosed. It is so... Pokey, yeah, narrow, it, it is. Has a scent of its own. Yes, and not a pleasant one at that. Yes. I I was there, when was I there? I was there a few years ago now. I remember being really excited to go see it. You hear yeah. about it growing up yeah. in school. You get on that train, yeah. you cross the water, and it's cool. Yes. For uh, I'll stop over. I'm sorry, but I'll just cut to it. No, uh, 24 hours. I agree. Stop over. At, at, at most, yeah. at most. Some of the yeah. islands around it are cool. Yeah. And some of the glass making around it is brilliant. Melting the, clocks. Yeah, the craft yeah. Center phenomenal around. craftsmanship is unbelievable, yes. and inter entertaining and interesting to see. Yeah. For about an hour. Exactly. And after that, you go see the big square. Again, beautiful, interesting for 20 minutes. And too many people trying to sell you stuff. Like some places get really damaged by the tourist vendors. And I feel like this is a place where the people who are trying to sell stuff to tourists take away from the Absolute, city itself. Absolutely, it is. And this brings us back to what we were saying before about how we like to go and find the slightly more rogue parts of town where exactly. you don't see all those tourists because you don't get that same... The problems which come with pestering it. for lack of a better yeah. word because that's that does happen sometimes um we've had a few today where yeah. people come up to us and and try and sell us something and say no thank you we're not interested you always start for like yeah. you, don't need to, yeah. you know they're, they're just trying to make a living yeah. but at, at a point the fourth time yeah in 30 seconds yes it, it does tend to lead to a just go away yeah i've told you i'm not interested um and don't be afraid to do that as well like yes they're trying to sell you something don't be pressured into something that A, you don't need, or for example today, we were walking around exploring the city, we don't need a scooter ride because we don't know where we're going. No, exactly, we, <laughs> yes. we, we, we were just having a look around. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess moving on to the final part of our podcast today, yeah. um, we're going to jump into some travel recommendations. Now, we're going to keep this quite broad, doesn't have to be a place. Yep. Um, it can be 
something you should take with you, something yeah. you should make sure that you're doing beforehand, yeah. uh, anything to make your life traveling easier, or well, just to give you a recommendation or a place to go if you are considering the next trip. Yeah. Bit stuck on on what to do. Hopefully we can shed some light on what like what, what we've liked, yeah. potentially what you might like, um, and be the inspiration for your next trip. So Millsy, what have you got for us today? This week's recommendation is definitely, as we learnt last night, to have as many forms of payment available to you at any one time as possible. We arrived at a it's a very well established hotel mm. and normal payment methods booked online or confirmed. Their machine wasn't working on the physical visas or MasterCards. We obviously weren't carrying this amount of cash on us. And Apple Pay saved the day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely it did. I think we were all standing around at one point going, oh, there was what's going on in here? Seven we, cards. Yeah. Like we had cards. We yeah. had all our personal visas. We had... Travel visas, MasterCards. MasterCards. Yeah, we had all sorts of different... Of different setups and the only one of them that worked was apple pay thankfully for that because we we're all quite tired yeah well um, we didn't get in until well it wasn't too late here but it was quite late it's been a long day moment time it had been a long day we we're quite tired just wanted to have a feed have a drink and go to bed but we we're all sort of standing there going well you know what's going on here yeah. we can't pay so definitely a very good one to consider making sure that everything is linked up onto your phone as well as having the physical cards Potentially even not that much cash, but having Just cash make sure you have cash on you. option yeah. as well. Yeah, no, fantastic advice for sure. I am going to go a place with mine, and I am going to take us back to one that we did just speak about, and I am going to recommend Prague. Yeah. I think if you are in that area of Europe, or if you're not too far away, or if you're going, you know, you're going on a Europe trip, even if you just want to go somewhere, Fantastic. Go. Culture is brilliant. The buildings are amazing. The food's fantastic. The drink is fantastic. It is an absolutely phenomenal city. It is also really well located as well. If you do fancy going in to Germany, it's a short train ride away. Yeah. It's it's two, incredibly two and a half hours fantastic. to Berlin. Exactly that. Exactly that. It is it's brilliant. Um if you are can you know, if you are after somewhere to go for your next trip, I can't I can't recommend it highly enough. It is absolutely phenomenal. And don't be worried about the language skills there. English, well known. German, really well spoken. Yeah. Um, even it, even French. Yeah. French went pretty well there as well. Um, the only thing is they are quite specific when it comes to their currency. They're not doubling the euro. It is, it is the yeah. Czech krona. Um, but, you know, it's it's... It's their it's currency at the end of the day. Cheap relative to, yeah. to what we're used to. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I definitely can't recommend it highly enough. Um, but yeah, I, don't know. I think that that's a good, good place to wrap it up. Thank you very much for joining us on this first of many podcasts to come. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a lot of exciting journeys to come up and also a lot of exciting podcast content yeah and some of these like i said right at the start some of them will be this sort of content where we're sitting right yeah. next to each other having a face-to-face -face conversation and other you might see on a facetime or, or a yeah. zoom call from the other side of the planet um might have a guest replacing one of us for a few weeks exactly right away. it'll be it'll be very um, interesting especially as we when we enter europe and we split up and we do our own our own sort of things that yeah. that we're after it will become a slightly more interesting Form of content, and if you guys have anything that you'd like us to touch on, 100%. travel stories, any sort of categories you'd like us to get yeah. into, um, any travel stories of your own that you want us to read out, please do let us know. We'd be very interested and very excited to hear your feedback and your 100%. your story. So thank you very much for joining us, guys, and we will we will see you next time. Thank you.